Welcome to Wednesday's edition of Renew Plus. I'm Pastor Tony. Thank you for joining us again today. And again, this is our final week in our series entitled Faith Life. And I'm trying to cover as much as I can here to finish this off in our final week. Let's go over to the book of Hebrews again, Hebrews chapter 6. We've already, I think, looked at scriptures here in Hebrews chapter 6. I'm going to back up just a little bit and point something out that we kind of... Uh, we kind of glazed over, kind of mentioned and glazed over earlier in, in earlier messages in this podcast. But Hebrews chapter 6, verse number 11 to begin with, he says, And we desire that each one of you show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end. Now we've already again talked about hope, the importance of hope. Hope is the ability to see something on the inside that you can't see on the outside. And of course, faith gives substance to things hoped for. But notice verse number 12. It says that you do not become sluggish, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Now I want you to see that there are three elements that he mentions in these two verses that are very important for us into, in possessing our promised land, reaching our destination, receiving God's best in our life. First of all, like we've already mentioned, hope is mentioned in verse number 11. Then in verse 12, it mentions two that go together, faith and patience. That is going to require faith, patience, and hope. And those all three work together in our life to help us to inherit or see the manifestation of the promises of God in our life. Now, again, we've already talked about hope. We've talked about faith the entire time. But what exactly is patience? If, if patience is required here, it, 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 coupled with our hope and coupled with our faith in order to inherit the promises, what exactly is patience? Now, I know a lot of people have a lot of different ideas about patience, but patience also can be, and, and is translated in other translations of this, it is translation, it translated endurance. Endurance. That would involve consistency. That would involve staying persistent over a period of time. In fact, that is exactly what patience is when it's coupled with faith, when it says faith and patience. Patience is the ability to maintain your faith, to maintain your confession of faith over a period of time, even though you see the clock, you know, passage and you see the calendar changing and you're facing adverse conditions and circumstances in your life that's telling you it's not going to come to pass, patience causes you to maintain your faith, to fight the good fight of faith, to maintain the good confession over a period of time until you see the end of your faith, which is the manifestation of the promise of God in our life. See, most of the things in life, in fact, very, very few things in life are going to come instantaneously. We're not normally going to receive instant manifestations to what we're praying for, to what we're standing for, what we're believing for. There's usually a passage of time involved. In fact, we're most of the time going to have to stand against circumstances and conditions that are screaming at us many times, telling us there's no way this is true. This is not a reality and it's not going to come to pass in your life. Well, see, faith by itself is good, but faith requires patience or endurance, the ability to maintain faith with the passage of time. Now, patience isn't just waiting. It's not just sitting on the couch, eating popcorn, watching TV, and just waiting just because the, just the passage of time itself is going to cause the promise to come to pass in our life. That is not true. We have to fight the good fight of faith. There's things that we have to do in the process of between when you say amen and the, the time that it's manifested in our life and we say there it is. There's that passage of time and patience keeps our faith, the pace of our steps of faith going in order for us to reach that destination. In fact, you know, we say many times, I've said this oftentimes and it's true, that the Christian life and the Christian walk is not a sprint. If it were a sprint, we could all kind of, you know, just burst out of the starting gates, go 100, you know, meters as fast as we could, 
and cross the finish line, we're done. Well, that's not normally the way this life is. This life is a marathon, not a sprint. And I can tell you, there's a whole lot of difference between a sprinter in the Olympics and a marathon runner, someone who runs a marathon. You don't see the same guys or same gals doing both of them. You see two totally different mindsets there, two totally different trained people doing this. You know, if if somebody's going to run a marathon, I've never done that, never even come close to running a marathon, but I watch these guys on TV and I am really amazed at the fact that they can keep up such a strong, fast pace, you know, mile after mile after mile for 26 point whatever miles, two or whatever miles it is. They can keep that pace going. It requires endurance on their part. They understand when they start that race, it's not just 100 meters and it's over. They understand that they're going to have to maintain that pace for a period of time. And they're going to, it's going to require endurance for them to do that. Well, see, this is what this is talking about right here. Patience is endurance. It's the ability not just to run a, uh, a sprint 100 yards or 100 meters, but it's, it, it, this is a marathon. In order to reach our finish line, in order to cross our finish line, reach our destination, see the promise of God, see the things we're believing for come to pass in our life, it's going to require endurance, spiritual endurance on our part. And that's where patience comes in. We've already said that, you know, faith is like, you know, is, is a walk. And that walk is a step by step, put one foot in front of the over, uh, uh, in front of the other over a period of time, and eventually you will reach your destination. But that requires consistency. That requires endurance in order to be able to do that. And that's what he's talking about right here. The people who we see in the Word of God, and he's using again Abraham as an example. Just because God said, "I have made you the father of many nations," didn't mean it come, came to pass overnight. In fact, it was like 25 years from the time that God first began talking to him about that until he had his first seed born, which was Isaac. And of course, it was a long time after that before he saw his descendants as the dust of the, of the ground. But eventually that did happen. But it required faith and patience on the part of Abraham. That means you're going to have to learn to stand and to stand even when the clock, the calendar, or the conditions are telling you the Word of God is not true, it's not going to come to pass, that you stay in there. And see, these three together, these three elements right here together, hope, faith, and patience, all working together, will help you reach your destination. Now, Hebrews has a lot to say about patience or endurance as it's translated many times. But let's look at a couple of them. In fact, we looked at one of them the other day, just the, at the very beginning, in Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews the 11th chapter. Again, this is the Hall of Fame of Faith. And we were actually reading about Moses. And we're going to read about him once again here. Just going to take it down a little further. And we're going to see this element of patience or endurance and how he was able to endure. Because if we find out how Moses was able to endure how he was able to exercise that force of patience, then that's going to help us to stay in our race. All right, verse 24 again, it says, By faith Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Now, we already talked about that earlier in this week, that if you're going to live this life of faith, you're going to re reach the destination God has for you, you're going to not only have to accept the things that God's called you, but you're also going to have to refuse to be called the things that the world's trying to put on you. The labels, the titles, the things that, you know, of your past that uh, names and titles and things that the enemies called us, you know, all of our life. We're going to have to refuse those. We're going to not answer to those anymore. We've already talked about that. But verse 25 it says, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin. Now, most people in the world would never do that. They would never choose to suffer afflictions with the people of God. They would choose to be in royalty and enjoy all the pleasures and all the benefits and privileges of royalty. But there was something that happened with Moses. There's something that specifically happened on the inside of Moses that caused him to be able to choose this. Now, notice in verse 26, esteeming the reproach of Christ 
greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. Listen, for he looked to the reward. I want you to see that right there. Why did, Ab why did Moses choose the way he chose? Why did he do the things that he did? Why was he esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt? It says, for he looked to the reward. Now, this is not something he saw naturally speaking. This is not something that he saw around him and said, I tell you what, I see the, I see the, uh, the riches of Christ here, and I'm going to choose that over the riches of Egypt is not a natural seeing. It goes back to that hope, the ability to see something on the inside that you cannot see on the outside. You know, it's uh, what we quoted earlier in some other lessons, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 18. It says, For we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary. You know, all those passing pleasures of sin, all those treasures of Egypt, privileges of Egypt, that is temporary. It's only about this life. And it's only about temporary things. And I tell you what, it is not the eternal things that we can only see in the Word of God and only see through the eyes of hope in our heart. And that's what he's talking about when he says he looked to the reward. He was able to see the reward internally. He was able to see this vision internally, hope that he could not see externally. That caused him to do something that would be, in all accounts, by the natural mind, foolish. Uh, against all natural wisdom. But you know what? We're not talking about natural wisdom here. We're talking about the wisdom of God. The ability to see eternal things, unchangeable things, greater riches, greater things for us. And we have to, only, we, we have to begin to see those internally first. You're not going to see them out here first. There's not going to be physical evidence first to the Word of God being real in your life first. You're going to have to accept the reality of God's Word and begin to see that through the eyes of your heart. Now notice in what he says in verse number 27. He says, by faith he forsook Egypt. <laughs> he not only just chose not to be a part of the house of Pharaoh, he just forsook all of Egypt. He says, by faith, by faith tells us it's by faith and not by sight. He forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. You know, this not only, he not only forsook Egypt, he also was able to be delivered from fear in this present life. Again, notice how this happens. Not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured. There's patience there, right there. Endurance. He endured as seeing him who is invisible. <laughs> how do you see somebody who is invisible? Well, you cannot see God who is invisible. You can't see the kingdom of God which is invisible. You can't see the realities of what God has made us, what God has already given to us, what is God has already provided and made available for us in Christ. You can't see those through the eyes of your of, the, of these eyes in the front of your head with your natural eyes and your natural brain. Notice he says he he endured as seeing him who is invisible. It goes right back into hope. It goes right back into being able to see something on the inside that you couldn't see on the outside. I tell you, this is a key right here that we're seeing uh, of how to, to, by faith and patience, inherit the promises of God. It's by being able to endure as seeing something that is invisible. Again, just because it's invisible to your natural eyes, does not mean it is not real. Just because it's unseen does not mean it's unreal. We're not talking about fantasy world here. We're talking about realities. Realities that are rooted in the Word of God, rooted in God Himself. And the only way you're going to be able to have faith and endure is being able to keep your eyes, the eyes of your heart, fixed on the invisible things of God. The reward that is invisible. Now, Let's also look over to Hebrews chapter 12, Hebrews the 12th chapter, just one chapter over. And you know, after Hebrews 11, where it talks about all the men of faith, men and women of faith there, and what they did by faith, now it talks about Jesus. Verse number one, it says, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily ensnare us, and let us run with endurance, there it is, let us run this race with endurance that is set before us, looking, look, verse 2, looking unto Jesus, 
the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy set before us endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of God. Notice our endurance has to be by looking to Jesus. Jesus made it. You know what? We have the same faith. We're going to make it as well, but we're going to have to be able to see something that is invisible and keep our eyes on something that is invisible. That's going to cause you to run your race with endurance, faith, and patience to inherit the promise. Well, that's all the time I've got again for today. Boy, our time goes fast. If you'd like additional resources and materials, go to TonyCowan.org. We will see you tomorrow. Mm -hmm.